Birthday settings, both beer. Yeah, you know. How old is Big Rider? Oh, yeah, David. Everything good. Respect, man. Respect, man. In town. So we are out here. Birthday twin. Happy birthday. Alright. Go on again. Go on again. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, yeah no. So how does that care? My friend Sarah. Oh, this is sister? sister in law. Oh. Right. That's my best friend. Your best friend is? Right. I best friend. I best friend. Go best friend. So they say I'm a best friend too? Yeah. Go best friend. Do something no? Go best friend. Go best friend. <laughs> Me invite Mel, her. Who invite me tell, no over bother with that. Mel, me tell Mel you. from last who week. Me tell Mel who from where you. Me not respond to that. Me tell Mel who from where you. Say I'm a birthday. Thank you. He told me he's doing something ah. for his birthday, but he never sure about the plan yet. But, but, but I called the final. Exactly. So, so if I didn't say anything, if I didn't say anything, it's a community. Everybody say happy birthday to. Happy yeah. birthday! Yeah. <laughs> Everything good? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Are you bringing all any woman? Hi. Hi. So you are going? Yeah, I'm going to go easy. Enjoy the holiday. Enjoy my birthday, you know? Yeah. Happy birthday, bro. You Thank you. Thank you. Alright. Alright. Birthday vibes out here. All right, people. So, see Johnny Sonia. Yeah, yeah, in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, Kingston. So, what do we want to do then? Where do we run him? We don't know where we run him. So, you're supposed to know where we run him, bro. You know, you're going to publish something. You know, we're going to feed him. A band of our, our big river. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what no, What happened? No, you like that setting, sir? Eh? 10 minutes time, I'm going to tell you. I like it. 10 minutes time, where are you there? Danny. In got neck road. He's, he's down here published something we're not supposed to publish already. <laughs> and you judge you to that. And you judge you to that. Yeah. <laughs> meet up again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meet, meet up, up again. Up. Oh, Another yeah. thing good. Yeah. yeah man, follow me for IG, Legend Born. Also from YouTube, Legend Born. So Legend like the movie, I am Legend. I'm yeah. born as born identity. Just cool up. Huh? Alright, boss. It's a road man. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh yeah, she has a birthday twin. Yeah, 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 she has a birthday twin. Mama cleaning up. See her hand. She not do camera. We not show her face. Yeah. Yeah. We not see a girl with a while ago. You could go look eyes for yourself. Eh? Yo, you see Bambi and Scotta. I see Bambi and Scotta. Eh? Eh? Don't worry about it, man. We need some time. Drink them raw. No, we can't do it like that. Put down the airside. Boxing in your blood class. Everybody post me. Eh? Me don't have a look on. Eh? Let's see your Thanksgiving day. Yeah. So merry happy birthday to you today, Mr. Oh, what's the name? I mean, we oh, oh, we are called Bingy. We can't get Bingy phone. I want to Bingy. Oh, Bingy from man is true. I'm mean, not get Bingy. Bingy, you know? I crown him on a beat. More beat up here and Danny. But I'm more beat up. Yeah. I don't have nothing to do with that. That's <laughs> a phone or something. Yeah, I can't even get him. You know, Wendy. Must have to do a family thing, you know? Same family thing, you know? You know what I mean? 
Hold on, Where are my eyes are? You know, girl. I'm here to tell you, just live on. Yeah, yeah, no, tell me happy birthday. I'm going to tell you, you know, girl. Hear me, I tell you, sir. Just live on. Just live on. I'm Mr. Awap on the straight line. Okay. Enjoy your life, boy. That's the man, the straight line. No, the some light on who am I um, what type of person I am and you know going forward if of course you guys meet me in person you know don't be afraid to say something say hi I'm a very friendly person so yeah <laughs> all right so here we go all right, so who is Bambi? Yeah, I I adopted the persona or the name Bambi when I was working at a hotel in Lucy. Um, it's called Grand Palladium. That's where I worked at in entertainment there. Um, I was dating an Italian guy at the time and he usually called me his little bambina. So it's Italian for baby or um, young girl or, you know, jovial woman. So I shortened it and just said Bambi. So ever since, you know, that time, the name stuck. So from then time the name come up with the name Bambi. As I'm gonna name myself Bambi. Um I grew up with my grandmother um ever since. Um my mom before she passed away I heard a few days ago. Um but before she passed away, she was away for a while, so I had to stay with my grandmother. And I've been with my grandmother since I was five years old. Um, I lived in a house with my aunt, my two cousins, and my older sister. 
and it was very compact um my mom my grandmother actually she was very you know nonchalant towards me she would mostly favor my cousins because they were light-skinned so that was something that i had to grow up with um in a household with family or relatives who didn't like dark-skinned people um when i was younger my grandmother was upset at me at times i'm a i'm a kid kid children give all the trouble people give trouble all the time so my mom had this house um close by where my grandmother lived and every time she punished me she would send me down to the house i was about six at the time when it happened um the first time i got raped i went to the house i can't forget i was in a red dress pink pink dress it was my favorite dress and it had little buckles here um and when my grandmother told me to go down to the house, um, one of my other brothers were, well, my two brothers lived there, but only one was there on that specific day. And when I went to the house, um, I was watching TV and I was laying down in the bed. And my brother came behind me and he was like, he was hugging me up and he was like it's okay and every time he's asking me if i'm all right and i'm saying yeah I'm, I'm okay i'm good you know i'm just there and to be honest um i just felt my my clothes riding up but i never really like paid attention i'm a kid i don't know what's happening like okay this is my brother you know this is somebody I can trust. He's not a stranger. And he pulled my clothes up and I just felt uncomfortable and I felt something sticking me, but I couldn't explain what it was. And I was scared to look behind me. But every time I felt that particular movement or him moving, he would ask me if I'm okay and it just I the only thing I could do was just say yes I'm okay I don't I didn't know what was happening to me and after I left the house I came up and my grandmother saw blood on my clothes and she was like really you can't do and your mother can't go around but tell us if you go inside of the house and she got so upset with me and she beat me on top of that Growing up, after finishing primary school and going to high school and learning about your body and everything, After learning about my body and everything in high school, um, I found out exactly what happened to me. And looking back, I was like, he was supposed to protect me. He was supposed to be the one as well. And I didn't like how they were treating me and it felt like every time I was being watched, um, because they think I was doing something and then I went back to my grandmother's house at the time um, a few months after that um, I heard that my mom was coming back from England I haven't seen my mom in literally 
13 years at the time when she was coming back. I haven't seen her in the longest time. So a mother-daughter relationship would have never ever been there. And knowing that she's coming back, I don't know the mentality or the, you know, what she's gonna be like. Is she gonna be understanding what's gonna come? I was lost, I was confused, I was nervous because I didn't know how to act and how to basically be myself around my own mother. Um, weeks went by. This was the summer of 2013. So I graduated from Mount Alvernia um, in 2013. And I was on, of course, summer break. So this is the, the break you get to determine if you want to go back to school, like pre-college, or you're gonna go straight into the working world. That was the year for that. So being there and knowing that my mom is back in my life, I was super excited. I was like, hey, like this is going to be a great summer. I'm gonna make this happen. And at the time when I was doing my SBAs, I had a godfather who basically did everything for me. He paid for my subjects, he made sure that I was good, he bought my laptop, everything. So when I moved back to my grandmother's house, my mom was currently there, so I had everything there now, like to my comfort. And I can't forget one morning I got up and I was on the laptop. It's summer vacation, it's summer holidays. I don't have school to study for, or anything to study for or, get, or prepare for because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. My godfather wanted me to go back to school. Um, I just didn't want to, you know, pursue that yet. I wanted to see what was out there because I was always um sheltered um in the fact that i don't even get to do anything on my own i don't make my own mistakes so i wanted to see what was out there and i can't forget the morning when i was on my laptop on the veranda and i was i was on facebook of course and it was early in the morning so it wasn't like an all day thing i just started i just took up the laptop and i'm doing something on it and my mom asked me to do something for her and i said okay i'm gonna go do it but you know teenagers you talk to them one time they're not gonna move right away you probably have to talk to them like three four five times which i understand so my mom probably she still know you know understand me or know me yet and she got upset and she took my laptop from me and she threw it down the stairs we're on a two-story apartment and she threw my laptop down the stairs. And the only thing I remember was like holding her so tight that my my brother had to pry me off my mother. Like it wasn't something that I was proud of, but the way how I retaliated, it was like you don't you didn't need to do that. Like it my prefer you didn't lick me or slap me or something, but you did not you know somebody hard-earned money pay for that laptop and you didn't know what i had to go through to make sacrifice or she didn't know what sacrifices they had to make to get me a laptop so i felt super violated so i'm not proud of what i did but it happened and she didn't even try to talk to me or anything she just threw my shit out sorry but my language she just threw my clothes out like that was it and I stood downstairs, standing over my clothes, hoping that my mom would just say, hey, you know, I was just upset, come back inside or anything like that. She closed the door, she locked the gate, and all I, I, I just started crying, because I'm like, I don't have anywhere to go. I don't know where to go. And I stayed with a neighbor for a few days, and then, I ran away and you know with a friend and started to live in anchovy in montego bay got my first job at 17 in 2013 and i was working it at a bar in copper shot and of course it's far away so you know taxi them hard forget and then where i live in anchovy it was a like a strip a strip going up to the house that most taxis don't like to go because it's very dangerous. Well, at the time, anchovy was very dangerous. 
So one night when I was leaving work, um, the taxi decided to say, you know, now drop me up there tonight. So I'm going to go off the foot it. I said, all right, cool, no problem. Paid my fare, came out of the car, and I was walking up the street. It was very dark, and it was just me alone. And the only thing I heard was, give me a phone. So I was just standing there, and I wanted to turn around, and him, I said, yo, don't turn around, just give me a phone, and give me money where you have in your bag. I told him I don't have any cash. I literally just paid the last money I have to the driver for drop my dear so and the phone I have I want Samsung 3310. So if you want it, you can take it, but I have nothing else. Anyways, he grabbed the bag, he searched it, searched and he said, yo, this guy do you know you have to do something else you know what you can do? Cause I eat this, you know. Trigger me a pull. So and so and so and him you know him start make me feel very nervous and he sent me for walk. I'm a walk and him carry me up one far place in a some bush and him just he took it and after he was finished him tell me if he close my eyes and count to ten and we do that when I count to ten I'm open my eye I never see him so I don't know who he is who he was whatever I don't know anything and I went back to the house and I started crying again and I asked, I started to question my faith. And I was like, why is this happening to me? Why y'all make this happen to me? Um, I'm not a child that I give trouble, I give problem, I don't understand why this happened to me. Like, I even asked my family if I can stay with them. And they were not even able to help me. I asked my grandmother, because my grandmother moved from one apartment and she, she built a house with my aunt. And they moved into that apartment. And I've asked a million times if I can come and stay there, and they're never okay with me coming. But they were always able to take my brother. And I don't understand. The same one already raped me. So they help him and they don't help me. I never understand that. But it's fine, it's whatever. <sighs> that was the second time. The third time it happened unfortunately i would blame myself um at the time i moved from anchovy and i was now living in norwood paradise norwood which i currently live now and i was working at a bar because i'm under age so you know i don't have no tra no id to get no proper job nothing like that so with the bar work now, they don't really ask for those stuff. I just tell them that I'm 18 and made it look good. I was way slimmer than this back then, but you know, they were, you know, the image was okay. So they never really asked me for no proof of age or anything like that. So I started working at the bar. Um, it was a bar on Harper Street. It's a bar on Harper Street. And I met this guy there. He was kind of English or whatever. I don't know if his accent was fake or what, but I met him there very ugly and him have like really thick binoculars, like in glasses, thick, the lens thick, but he was very ugly. And every time him come there, him always buy liquor, him always buy me liquor, him always leave tip and all that stuff. So. He told me that he liked me and he wanted to take me out, da, da 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 And I said, yeah, I'm okay with that, no problem. So I gave him my number, we would call back and forth. But every time he won't go out, he won't bring me guy in my yard. I said, no, I'm not that kind of girl. And if that's what you want, then I'm not interested. Because me know if I come in my yard, I know what will happen. Like, there's only one thing there. Where we are going to the yard, where we can't do out. So... He never gave up. He kept on texting me and he told me that he was leaving like the following weekend and he wanted to see me. So I said, yeah, sure you can see me. Where? So I said, if you're gonna say your house, I don't want to come. So he said, he, oh no, it's not this house. He's gonna take me out, da da da, -da. it's last night. He just wants me. I said, okay, no problem, sounds good. 
met with him downtown. He picked me up, he asked me where I want to go. Me a young girl in time there, so when I say KFC, I feel like a some rich place. You see me, so I'm saying, yeah, can I get a bigger box? Can I go KFC? Yes, I say KFC. And he said, alright then, cool, that's your man, fine, no problem. And he would say, like, he would have said, Oh, like me have somebody to pay up at the house. Cause him say my work on him house and him have somebody to pay up there and him name member. Style team. So we left to go to at the time when I went to the place I didn't know where where what I was. So now that I know where it is, it was Iron Shore. Um that I went to his house. But when it actually happened, I didn't know where I was and we went out there and for real they were working on the house and there was somebody else there so he brought me inside and he asked me like what I want to do in a life and all of that stuff and he gave me one book I want pen and see me for right down me long term goals and all that shit so I'm like okay so he's saying soon come back me for staying at the room so I sat in the room and I'm there writing down my long term girls on the little idiot self and him come back and he's like um laying on the bed with me and him start touch me so i'm say listen <laughs> i'm ready to go like right now i don't want to be here right now i don't want to do this i told you that i don't want to i don't want to come here and him start like he started behaving all um upset and him start get angry and he's like oh what y'all do what y'all try do style y'all try style man so i went on my phone i'ma call my cousin not jay <laughs> i have another cousin in Montego Bay. so i called him and i was like hey come get me so i'm at some guy's house i don't know where i'm at you need to come get me i didn't tell him that um i don't know where i was i said i'm at a guy's house and I'm ready. I don't want to be here. Come get me. By the time him asked me, when me day? He said, all right. And he said, when me day? The guy literally put him hand over my mouth, like, and started him holding on to me and threw the phone in the wall. So, you know, my little banger shell out. So, you know, say, my cousin hear the last thing in the, the voice, in the, the call, me a scream. Like you could hear me screaming behind his his um his hand. And may I scream and I start cry and he must say, Yo, I'm go call him friend Nani. I call him friend Nani because I style thing with the pun and where am I gonna don't body when him don't and all him something and may I say, Jesus Christ, no. What me get myself in a what did I get myself into? And I started crying at me and say, just just take it. Like me never tell nobody. Me now go come back for her to now. Just say just take it. Like if that's what you want, just take it. Just take it. It no matter anymore. Right now in this time basically me I try to stay alive. So we yeah, we had sex. Um it wasn't consensual. I did not enjoy not a bit of it never enjoy it and after he was finished he was like oh he wants to take a dip in the pool and cool off and so and so and in my mind me still afraid so anything that keeps me alive in this moment okay i'll do i'll do it he said take off your shirt me said okay he said, put on the shirt there. I said, okay. He said, catch up your hair. I said, okay. He said, loose out your hair. I said, okay. Anything that keeps me alive, I'm doing it. And we went in the pool. We were there for a minute. And then, I did it, did it. I come back out of the pool. He come inside and we had sex again. And I just kept on crying while he was doing it. Keep crying. I, I kept crying. And... He's like, oh, I don't want to hurt you and this and that and that and this. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, bro, <laughs> it was
don't even understand right now like you done past the limit this is not safe and after that i just said like this is it so the next morning when we got up we went up early early like we're not, we're not even sleep like the image the what happened the moment was just keep playing over in my head playing over in, in my head and we still every time we look up we still can't see the phone chill out so i'm just to check this all right the battery did this up the phone did this up all right that did this so i'm saying all right the phone good so at least when we leave or what am i gonna do i'm gonna go grab the phone and make a quick call and in the morning got up and him gave me about my phone the blouse that i had on was like a brown a brown outer top with beads that papa so that couldn't wear but my for wear my inner papa wear one of him white t-shirt then in the morning so he got ready with me and came down in the morning with me and he gave me about my phone I did not turn the phone on. So when me in the car, me sit down quietly and patiently until him drop me off. Me tell him so I remember when me leave. He just go with my cousin pick me up downtown because he wanted to drop me home. Me say, no. In my head, no. Me not make you drop me home for me to see when me leave. No. Sometimes I have to drop me downtown. Anyways, when me looking, give me five thousand dollar. I just take it. Come in here, one be rude. I tell him I do it like as if I was giving him a service or something. So I just take it. I take it. I'm gonna come out of the car. And as soon as I come out of the car, I watch him drive off a couple blocks and turn on the phone. Like a hundred and odd missed calls from my cousin and a few other people, a few other numbers of me not know did I call me. And by the time I call. <laughs> By the time I call him back, he must say, yo, you're good, where you there, where you there? Like he was, he was freaking out. And I couldn't even, I just, I just started crying and I said, where are you? And he said, I'm at home. And I said, I'll come up there. I'm going to go up in the house. And not even in that space of time, I could have explained to him what happened. But he knew, like I didn't have to say anything to him. He see on my hair ragged. Him see see me in a one white t-shirt when no him never left me in a or see me in a. He knew, but he just couldn't say anything. What was he supposed to say? Him just didn't want to know where the person did. And I didn't have that information. I just didn't want anything to do with it. And ever since, like, I just have a thing for men on a whole. Like, I am super insecure when it comes down to men. I always tell myself that I'm gonna like man, I'm gonna like this, I'm gonna like that. But it's just a mentality that what I've been through, it's just that I just think I can't trust them. Apart from the men I know, of course, you know. And looking back at it, and I'm like, my own brother wasn't supposed to protect me and make sure I'm a good and make sure I'm a safe. Not him I could trust. And that just show me say in this world like <laughs> it's unexplainable, really and truly unexplainable. Like I don't know who to trust, who is the right person to get all of these things out, to really show my love, to really show that hey, I'm a real and genuine woman, but I just the wrong person. Like me, I talk to or. I don't know. I don't know why I look so messed up. I'm not really. <laughs> not questioning, I swear. But I am happy to be alive today. Could have worse, I could have dead. Really and truly. Um, I've done a lot of checkups, which I was completely afraid to do. But to know my status is the best thing ever. And I encourage people out there to be careful because this is serious. You understand? And I've shared this story on my personal blog already. And I got some good feedback um, from especially one person that I knew from high school. She said that I gave her the courage to tell her boyfriend that she had for four years 
that she was um, sexually abused and it was because of my video sharing my experience and at times I don't even know how to explain it there are some really messed up people in this world and I don't know I'm just hoping that I can change it hasn't changed me a lot a lot because I'm still that person I'm still a loving person I give my all I'm hopelessly romantic but when it comes on to a relationship or if a guy wants to talk to me I am very very defensive very it's like <laughs> it's your man man doctor and you know the only thing we if you do I just run like you know I walk too close to him make him do you something that's just me I'm afraid I'm a man so I just see men like that so the ones that I've given a try them completely effed it up and the ones that effed it up some of them are like trying to get back there and it's just a no-no so I'm not perfect I must say but the last three years of my life um i thought it was supposed to be special unfortunately it didn't last long so now i am just single and i'm rolling with the flow at the moment and see where it can go so yeah my team <laughs> I want to thank you guys though for the endless, endless, endless support that you have given our channel. And to our viewers, I want to say thank you and also for allowing me to share my story, allowing you to take a breath for a minute and come into my world, you know? Thank you so much. And I really appreciate the support. I love the comments. I just and oh yeah, J um <laughs> on the stop cost J please. It's not his fault that I'm not here for the videos. I'm not here for the vlogs. Um I have work, you know, so um I don't really get much time off at the moment. But when I can, trust me, may I make no know say no make me do this. I swear, y'all giving me life. Y'all giving me a reason to do this. And I just love the support so far, thus far. And I have to say we have a great team. You know, everybody have them different personality. Everybody have them different points of view. And I just love that about our team. So this was my segment. Um... G always wanted me to do this and I was always scared, but I didn't cry as much as I thought I would. But yeah, it was a good one. So cool. Hope you guys like this video. If you do, please like, comment, share, and if you still haven't clicked the subscribe button, click it right now. Alright, and remember to tag three friends and share, 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 share. Bye. Bambi out.